now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. And folks, you know the uh, political races continue uh, in uh, Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Uh, you know there's a series that Dr. David Moylan is running here uh, with SSP-TV, uh, and he is uh, running for the 17th Congressional uh, District uh, for the House of Representatives, and what he is doing is presenting a number of issues that he could uh, clearly explain uh, so you could look at issues. Remember, we say all the time, folks, look for qualifications, check both sides, uh, and then you make the decision. Doctor, it's always good to see you. Sam, thanks again. It's a pleasure now, to be here. The, the standard speaker and the um, Republican uh, Herald uh, had uh, an article uh, in the standard speaker, our media partners, illegal immigration hot topic in the race for the House seat. And of course, there's uh, two sides of immigration. They interviewed you and they interviewed uh, Matt Cartwright. Um, let's talk about immigration. Immigration is very topical. It's making the headlines every evening almost with uh, the humanitarian crisis going on on the Mexican-U.S. Uh, border. And that's why I thought it was timely to uh, address it. And in a nutshell, my stance on immigration is that enunciated by the American Legion. And why the American Legion? Well, it's about a 42-page document. It's well researched, it's well thought out, and as I have said so many times in Schuylkill County, why reinvent the wheel? But uh, I wonder if we could uh, sure. go through this. We see and a, there's a, a, a trooper, border patrol. border patrol, standing guard. And again, why the American Legion? All those men and women have sworn to uphold the Constitution. And in fact, this is their credo, if you will, that they recite before every uh, meeting to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, to maintain law and order. That's one of the basic functions of any government, and to foster and perpetuate 100% Americanism. And they've uh, been instrumental in educating legal immigrants, giving them courses so they can pass the examination to become citizens. That goes back uh, decades. And this is the five point or five step proposal enunciated by the American Legion. And uh, again, number one, before we do anything else, we have to secure the border as well as other points of entry to eliminate the job magnet that's drawing these uh, children and workers to our country. And again, the illegal immigrants are lawbreakers and a policy of no amnesty is enunciated by the Legionnaires. And again, how can we reduce the illegal population in the United States? Uh, mass exportation really is not practical. And there are many objections to that, but they do have a proposal for that. And then also a, a big source of illegal immigration in our country is overstays, people that came in legally and their visas ran out and they never went home. In fact, uh, some of the 9-11 hijackers were in that category. So uh, the next slide, again, just uh, goes over that primacy of securing the border and points of uh, entry. And our next slide will show some of the immigration and custom enforcement statistics, and they're mind-boggling. Um, in two, uh, 2013, 357,000 aliens were removed. Of those, 241,000 came from our neighbor, Mexico. But then we, we've got to worry about these OTMs, other than Mexicans who are illegally entering our country. And that's up 27% last year. And the prediction is it's going to even get higher. And um, our next slide lists the other top nine after Mexico for uh, deportation of illegal aliens. And we see Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. These are the Central American countries connected to us by the, uh, the land bridge of uh, Mexico. And uh, again, it's, a, it's about 114,000 total each year. And what's drawing them up here? We've got to cut off that magnet, the job magnet, and also the um, uh, entitlement uh, rights uh, that are 
being granted to the illegals. And that's just drawing them up here, and we've got to take some steps. In that newspaper article that you referred to, uh, Sam, uh, Congressman Cartwright talks about how he desires to get these people jobs and turn them into taxpayers. Well, the next statistic, uh, next slide, kind of shows what we're up against. And the, uh, the benefits outweigh their uh, taxes that they're paying by about $14,000 a year per uh, illegal household. So it's, we're, we're in the negative um, by bringing more uh, workers in. So what you're saying is that, uh, just hold it that. It doesn't balance out. It doesn't ba so, um, uh, he they're, they're consuming more benefits in our welfare system than they are paying taxes by about uh, 14,000 per household per year. See, he is saying that um, ultimately they have to be given um, uh, a tough but fair path to citizenship. Yeah. Um, and what they're, I guess, uh, he's supporting Obama, uh, where they're, they're coming over saying we're going to make citizens out of these people, and, then, and they will become taxpayers, and they will, you know, they will vote. And, and you're saying... Well, right now they're consuming many more services uh, than they're uh, paying for. So it's good. We just can't afford it. Sam. I want to make taxpayers out of these people, Cartwright yeah. said. I want them paying into Social Security and Medicare. The people coming across the border are not 75-year-olds. No. Yeah. No, they're younger, a lot younger. But, again, the analogy here is uh, we're on the Titanic. The Titanic is going down, our country, financially. Close to $18 trillion in debt. And there's life rafts here. And what are we going to do? Paddle over and bring every other uh, immigrant, illegal immigrant, and get them into our, our lifeboat. The lifeboat's going to yeah. be swamped, Sam. When and they're the, figure, the dollar figures that document it. When Congressman Barletta was on the show, and it'll be on again, um, uh, the, there's a lot of questions as to why uh, they want to bring all these people in. Um, and I asked him, based on an email I received, is it politically motivated, which means when you start depending on uh, your government and you're getting everything for nothing and you're not participating, okay, um, then if I'm providing that for you and I happen to be Sam LaSant from the XYZ party, you're going to keep me in office, okay? And so he feels that it is politically motivated, okay, based on what is happening in the country today. Do you, do you feel that this, all this stuff of the, the bringing all these people in is to Sam, have people? I think that's a logical conclusion when you look at the data and uh, the mini amnesty that was granted to people seeking asylum two years ago. The word got out and they're heading north. Uh, continue on with your, your slides. Well, I, I just wanted to interject this because I, I see some of the things here that um, I want to try to be fair on board, both parts here, okay? Yeah. You're saying that that's not going to be the case, okay? Cartwright says deporting the 11 million illegal elegants in, in this country is not feasible and another solution must be found. Solution, Certainly a mass deportation yeah. is, is not feasible. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> let's just look at the next slide. Right. and um, No amnesty for illegals. That sounds pretty cruel, doesn't it? But let's look how it worked out in the past, Sam. Yes. And uh, Ronald Reagan, in 1986, signed the uh, Immigration and Reform Control Act. It was a blanket amnesty. Before, before that time, it was individual amnesties, but a blanket amnesty for 2.7 million. And again, it was sold on the idea that it was gonna be once and done. Well, that's not the way it worked out, Sam. There's been six other, we can just briefly scroll through those, uh, over the, the years since then. And um, one for Nicaraguan uh, um, immigrants, Haitian. There was one uh, on that, the next slide. But a total of six. And it hasn't taken care of the problem. And uh, the American Legion is suggesting that we can reduce the number of illegals in our country by, quote, attrition through enforcement. And it's been estimated that 10 to 20 million individuals in this country are currently heal, here illegally. That's a phenomenal number, but it's just hard to get the exact number. Um, and then this is a clip from Fox News, the next slide. And uh, this happened. It, um, in fact, my new mantra, Sam, is common sense and common values. 
And look at this, more than 2,200 illegal immigrants, including 600 with criminal convictions. Not they were waiting for a trial, they, had, they were convicted. They were released by federal authorities in early uh, 2013 in advance of uh, a rollback of sequester funds. Does that make any common sense to release that many people rather than just send them back to their native country? Here again, uh, let's go back to, uh, uh, you know, there's always reasons for things. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just stating what the Congressman Barletta said and Congressman Mike Kelly. The fact that um, when Obama ran the second time, there was a lot of promises made and, you know, the, vote he, the votes he received were, were people from who had relatives who were, wanted to come into the country. And is he fulfilling that obligation right now by giving all this amnesty and, and making it as a payback? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and so, we, you know, we have to look at that. But if he's doing that, uh, you're saying that Car uh, uh, Congressman Cartwright is supporting what Obama is doing. In yes. fact, more so than 98% of the time, he, he supported yes. whatever Obama is doing. Is that correct? I want to make sure. Well, he's at 96%. 96%. And Nancy Pelosi is only at 95%. Yes. So he's 1% higher supporting what Obama is doing. Yes. Do you feel, um, uh, uh, as, you're, uh, as you're looking at this, and, and this is a very serious issue, Congressman Marbaletta has stated this many, many times, and everything he has said in the past is coming to fruition right now. Yeah. Uh, what would be what would be your what would be your uh, opinion? What would you do if you were the congressman right now? Well, our congressman refers to, you know, humanitarian concerns. <laughs> yes, Sam. What could be more humane than taking these youngsters and getting them back to the arms of their parents in Guatemala or Honduras yeah. or, or whatever? And I think that should be the focus. And indeed, uh, the House resolution. 5230 was just that. It was passed by the House with only 77 dissenting votes, and I imagine uh, Congressman Cartwright was one of those. But again, it's lingering. Senate went on vacation, and it's just uh, standing there. But it would also uh, provide funds up to $35 million for uh, border enforcement and reimbursing states for the uh, um, National Guard uh, that's being brought in. What I, what I, can I assume that right now in the campaign with, uh, that your position is completely opposite of what Congressman Cartwright's position is when it comes to illegal immigration? By and large, yes. Now, you see, what happens is you, you just said something about, you know, uh, where he said he does not, he does not want to throw the baby out with, you know, bathwater. Uh, and he's looking at humanitarian saying, look, we have to care for these people, okay? Um, is this a spin that the, the Democrats will start having as you get closer to the rest of it? Because right now the polls are showing uh, that there's going to be more Republicans because they're not happy what's going on in the country. This, these are the national polls as of today, okay? Which means that you, 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 even though you don't have as much money as he has, okay, and he's a very nice guy. He's a very likable person. Not an issue. Uh, uh, I've I mean, met him a number of times, uh, shaking his hand. Yeah. Uh, fine individual. Yeah. Well, we got to talk about issue. issues, okay? Yep. And that's the most. I mean, my neighbor could be great too, but maybe yep. not qualified, you know, to do what what brain we have to, brain surgery, whatever. So you you have two separate entities. You're going here, correct? I mean, you're you're not even near or close of what Cartwright's doing. We're at opposite, opposite ends of the spectrum on this. Yes. All right. Let's continue on with that, your slides. I just wanted to make sure okay. that I can well, interject here. I, I you know because I I don't want people to think that it's all one-sided. I think we people have to look at both sides. And you're making a great analogy here with this immigration. Well, here again, how can we lower the number of illegals? And American Legion says, let's do it through attrition, through enforcement. And these are just some of the figures. The mandatory workplace verification, you know, the instant card checks for uh, being sure someone has the legal right to be here. And that, that is electronic and that should easily be enforceable. And then we need to take measures to curb misuse of social security numbers and IRS identification numbers. Eliminate fraud and abuse. That, that's, uh, again, common sense. Well, that's going crazy now. And uh, cooperation between not only the federal, the state, and the local law enforcement. It seems like, uh, you know, the sheriff of uh, Arizona. Arizona, he's uh, at odds with uh, the state and uh, local and the um, 
uh, federal officials. They have to work as a team. Again, common sense. And then we have to screen the visitors to our country more thoroughly. And also non-criminal removal through increased interior enforcement. And we finally have to discourage illegal settlement, settlements by adopting additional state and local legislation. So uh, and, and what would, how would that uh, take care of the problem? Well, it's been shown that 183,000 illegal aliens each year will leave the country on their own volition. Maybe the job market dried up, uh, family matters back home, they leave on their own. By making it less hospitable with these state, federal, and local regulations, we could hopefully further reduce the illegal population by as much as 1.5 million illegal aliens each year. So again, that 220,000, Maybe over a decade we can chip away at that and then uh, eliminate the problem. Okay, folks, I'm talking to uh, Dr. Dave Moyland, who is a candidate running for the U.S. Congress in the 17th Congressional District. We come back, we'll talk a little bit more about immigration. I'd like to find out what's happening uh, as the coroner's Cooper County, what's happening in his office. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Lasan Show, folks, a series that Dr. David Moylan is doing here uh, on SSP-TV and, of course, uh, uh, being shown throughout uh, his legislative district. 17 Congressional District, he is running for U.S. Congress and he's talking about immigration. So let's continue on with your slides as to where we're at okay, with the Sam, uh, immigration. Um, well, again, the screening of foreign visitors. And that uh, we have the technology nowadays where this could be done biometrically fingerprints, uh, et cetera. And that, that's extremely important because, again, probably a million people a year uh, overstay their visa, students that have completed their educational re requirements and just don't go home. And we need to round these people up uh, because it's not only a uh, immigration issue, it's a national security issue. We have to be very conscious of that. Um, the other th thing that I'd like to point out is medical considerations, okay? Um, all kinds of diseases are coming across that border now in these yo younger people. There's uh, types of tuberculosis that we don't have uh, the drugs for. They're very expensive, the ones that uh, can be treated, and it might take uh, over $200,000 over the course of a year to complete treatment for tuberculosis. And again, Sam, it's at the taxpayer's expense. Yeah. You, you, uh, in the article here, it says, this is what uh, Cartwright said, I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. I do have humanitarian concerns. Moylan said, those worries are a smokescreen by Obama and his fellow Democrats. This president and the staunch allies, like my opponent, do not see this crisis as a direct threat to our national security, to our economy, or to our way of life. Rather, they see it as a political opportunity to gain more subscribers to the Affordable Care Act, more recipients to welfare, and more voters to ensure during their own re-election. And that seems to be the consensus from on the Republican side. Yes. You, you, you believe that? I will subscribe to that, yes. Okay. Uh, continue on with the... Okay. Uh, well. Uh, points of entry. The, there's not only the southern border, all harbors, uh, ports of entry in, in, by sea are potential uh, routes for illegals entering the country. And I'm going to just show next. This is a, an x-ray of a tractor trailer entering the country. And those uh, t tall figures, uh, some crouching figures, they're all human beings. And the next slide shows what was in that uh, truck. And uh, the same thing could be happening on container ships that come into our country from, you, you name it, the Caribbean and uh, coming into New Orleans or whatever. A container ship might have a thousand containers. And at present, Sam, we're only checking one out of 10. Yeah. So the other uh, nine or 90 out of 100 could be containing illegals or contraband or both. It's not that, you know, I really feel sorry for people like that because they're trying to get a better life. And I think that the thing is that there's a, there should be a, there's a process 
uh, that people should go through. I mean, because you just said, if you go to these communities where these illegal em uh, immigrants are with the diseases that are bringing in, and when, you're when you go to those communities, they're telling you how scared they are for their children, for their uh, health reasons. Uh, because when you don't, when you're not involved with it, you know, it's like something yeah. that doesn't exist. But when it hits your home, uh, like, you know, then it's, then it's a different story. There should be a process, you know, t for these people to come in because we are uh, a country that opens our arms to a lot of people. And I don't think we're, you know, you're, you're saying you don't want them. No, no, we, we have to uh, react appropriately. But uh, some of the diseases that are coming, I mentioned drug resistant tuberculosis, yes. big yeah. problem. But we're seeing uh, diseases that were mentioned in the Bible, like leprosy. Yeah. Again, th there are uh, treatments for it, but uh, still a very dread disease. Strikes uh, terror into the hearts of many people. Dave, we got about maybe four minutes left. So let's talk about your Schuylkill County Coroner's Office. You wanted okay. to touch well, on something. Yes. Um, we introduced some rather innovative um, procedures in the Coroner's Office designed to be more efficient and to save money. One of those was the electronic uh, record, medical record or decedent record. Uh, we subscribe to a commercial service called eCedin, and it allows me or my deputies to interact with that data securely. It's, it's highly encrypted uh, anywhere in the country as long as we have access to uh, the computer network. So that, that's been a big boon. The other has been the virtual autopsy. And I do have some uh, statistics showing um, how things have fared. And it looks at the two years uh, before I uh, took office. And again, we're, uh, we were averaging over 500 uh, investigations or coroner cases uh, per year. My first year, it jumped up to 613. And uh, in 2013, it was close to 600. And we're on track to, to reach that figure so far in 2014. But the number of open autopsies has declined. And we've been able to do that scientifically through the CAT scan virtual autopsy. And you can kind of see on this diagram that uh, in 2010, there were 81 autopsies. The following year, there were 71. We dropped it down to 51 with the era of the uh, virtual autopsy. It was actually uh, 36 last year. I uh, revised that figure. And now we're on. Uh, track to probably do 36 open autopsies uh, this year. And another uh, accomplishment is we've been able to keep that in Schuylkill County, thanks to your friend and mine, Mary Pescucci, who's a seasoned uh, pathologist, does a lot of the forensic work up here in Luzerne so County. So literally, you've saved thousands of dollars. Yes, we have, okay. yes. Um, uh, but I'd like to dispel a rumor yes. that has come back to me through the campaign. And one... <laughs> There'll be a lot more of those. Well, yeah, brace yourself. <laughs> yeah, brace yourself. Said. But uh, the rumor that's being spread is that I'm doing these virtual autopsies on every case. And certainly we're as selective about those, Sam, as we are uh, about the uh, regular autopsies. Well, your record's there. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, that's the unfortunate thing about politics, okay? If they can't get you on issues, they're going to tell you that they don't like your hair, or they don't like your suit. What's the matter and, with my hair? Well, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? And then, then all kind of rubric. And you know, that's what's going to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the sad thing about politics. And what I always tell the voters is, Please check credentials and find out about facts. I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat, Dave. I don't care what, it's what has Cartwright done. People have said in your district, okay, uh, emails I receive, pros and cons, where they feel uh, Congressman Cartwright is not in sync what at least 85 to 90 percent of his constituents. I don't know about that, okay? That's up to him to come out and say, this is what I've done on energy. This is what I've done on immigration. This, you know, his record's there, your record's there. So, I mean, uh, that's the sad part. When they don't like you, then they get personal and expect a lot of that because I get it all the time. <laughs> well, the other thing, uh, Sam, is when I ask the question, is the country going in the right direction, very few people say yes to that one. Well, they see it, and yeah. that's it. And I think what you'll have is you'll see a lot of spin right now. You're seeing it on national television, on the liberal media, where they're trying to cover a, a lot of stuff up. Uh, what Iraq, for example, uh, where Mitt Romney made a lot of statements as to what was going to happen, and it has happened. And uh, the media is getting a lot of egg in their face right now because they didn't present all the facts, and that's the sad part. Um, uh, it. 
it, it just it just frustrates you. You know, I wish you the best. Okay, and Appreciate we're continuing the series here, folks. Dr. Dave Moylan is continuing a series here on SSP TV uh, for keeping you informed, as well as Congressman Cartman has the same opportunities available to him. Uh, but it's a very important, very important election. This is probably one of the most important elections that we'll have in our lifetime, as far as we can see it right now. You know where the country is going. You've seen what's happening. Um, if you think it's great, then do what you have to do. If you don't, then make a change. We'll see you next time.